Hi guys and welcome to this Chemistry 1.4 Aspects of Selected Elements video. This video is about electron arrangement of atoms and ions. We're going to go through the methods that you need to know in order to draw the electron arrangement of atoms and ions. By the end of watching this video, hopefully these images below are going to look very familiar and something that you would be able to draw for yourself. So in terms of what this video is covering, Hopefully by the end of watching this video, you're going to feel comfortable with the method for drawing the arrangement of electrons of an atom and of an ion. So hopefully you remember in the last video we looked at the structure of atoms, where we saw that atoms are made from three types of particles. These being protons, neutrons and electrons. We saw that the sodium atom, as with all atoms, has a central nucleus which contains the protons and the neutrons and has the outer rings or shells that contain the electrons. And we also looked at the fact that the outermost ring or shell is called the valence shell, and the electrons that sit in that shell are called the valence electrons. The focus of this video is to make you feel comfortable with drawing something like this for yourselves. And as you can imagine, it's helpful to have a method or a series of steps in order to do this. As part of this video, we're going to go through an example using sodium to show you how to use these five steps in order to draw the electron arrangement of a sodium atom. So looking at step one, you need to find the element, in this case sodium, on the periodic table and circle its atomic number. So as you know, you are given a periodic table in your exam resource booklet. In your end of year exams, you are only ever going to be asked to draw an electron arrangement of one of the first 20 elements. So that's from hydrogen all the way through to calcium. So in this case, the element that we're drawing an electron arrangement for is sodium, which we can see is located here on our periodic table. So once you've found the element on the periodic table that you are going to draw the electron arrangement for, you then need to write down the atomic number and so when we look at the periodic table here, we can see that sodium has an atomic number of 11. And we know that this is the atomic number because it's located in the top left-hand corner above the symbol of the element. This is a really important step, and the reason for this is that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons in an atom. So once you've successfully done step one, you've found the element on the periodic table and you've circled the atomic number, you can move on to step two, which involves using the atomic number in order to figure out the number of protons and electrons that the atom has. So as we saw in the last video, elements are arranged on the periodic table by the number of protons in the atom, and we know that this corresponds to the atomic number. And this is important to know because it means that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons in an atom. Additionally, we know that atoms are neutrally charged, they're not like an ion that has a positive or negative charge. And therefore, if the atom is neutrally charged, it makes sense that the number of protons or positive charge in the atom has to be equal to the number of electrons or amount of negative charge within the atom. And that's why it's so important that you correctly find the atomic number, because from this you get the number of protons within the atom as well as the number of electrons in the atom. So going back to our example of sodium, we've found that sodium has an atomic number of 11, and therefore we know that a sodium atom must have 11 protons as well as 11 electrons. This means we can then move on to step 3, which involves drawing the nucleus of the atom. All you need to do is draw a circle and write inside it the number of protons that the atom has. At this level, you're not required to include the number of neutrons that the atom has, so the only thing that you're going to write in your nucleus is the number of protons. So in our example of sodium, we can simply draw a circle and write 11 protons within it, and that corresponds to our nucleus. It's a good idea in your exam to also label this as being the nucleus to avoid any confusion by your marker. We can then move on to step 4, which involves figuring out the configuration or the arrangement of the electrons within the electron shells of the atom. So in the last video, we looked at the rules for the number of electrons that are allowed in each of the shells of an atom. We know that in the first shell, there can only be two electrons, and the only exception to this is hydrogen, because hydrogen has an atomic number of one, and therefore will only have 
one electron in that first shell. In the second shell, there can be up to eight electrons, and we normally draw these electrons as sitting in pairs, as shown here in the diagram, in this type of positioning. In any of the subsequent shells, the third, fourth, fifth, and so on shells, there can be up to eight electrons sitting in these. And we simply draw that again like this, where the electrons are sitting in pairs as they are here. And this is something important that you do need to memorize. So when we come back to figuring out the electron configuration for our example of sodium, we know that sodium has 11 electrons, and therefore we need to figure out how these are going to sit in the electron shells around that central nucleus. So we know that the first shell must have two electrons. And because we need to add this up to 11, we know that our second shell is also going to have eight electrons. And counting this together, we can see that this is equal to 10 electrons. Therefore, there's going to be a third shell, and in this third electron shell, which is going to be the outermost shell, or the valence shell, there will be only one electron sitting there. And when you add two, eight, and one together, this equals 11 electrons, which is the number of electrons in a sodium atom. And therefore we can write this electron configuration as shown here. We can then finally move on to the last step, which involves drawing the arrangement of the electrons into the electron shells on the diagram. So as we just saw, the first shell is going to have two electrons, the second is going to have eight, and that last valence shell is going to have one valence electron. We then need to draw two electrons sitting in the first shell like this. We then draw eight electrons sitting in this position in our second shell with these electrons sitting in pairs looking like this. And we finally draw a third shell which has only one electron sitting in it like this. And as you can see by going through these five steps, we have drawn the correct electron arrangement for a sodium atom. We're now going to look at how to draw an electron arrangement of an iron. Atoms gain or lose electrons depending on which group they're in in order to form an ion that has a full outer shell. And in the last video we looked at the table of ions which is in your resource booklet which has been shown here as well. When it comes to the structure of an ion, we know that an ion has the same number of protons and neutrons as its atom. However, it differs in its numbers of electrons. We know that atoms lose electrons to form a positive ion, and the reason for this is that there's simply more positive protons than negative electrons. And we can see that these ions here are positive ions, where the ions can have a plus 1, plus 2, or plus 3 charge, depending on the number of electrons they have lost. Additionally, we know that atoms can gain electrons and form a negative ion. And when they do this, they form these ions here, which can have a negative 1 or a negative 2 charge. When it comes to drawing an electron arrangement for an ion, there is also a series of steps you can go through. As you can see, the first four steps are actually exactly the same as if you were drawing an electron arrangement for an atom. The only two steps that are different is numbers 5 and 6, where first you need to decide whether the atom gains or loses an electron. So let's go through our example, picking up from where we left off using our example of sodium. When it comes to deciding whether the atom gains or loses an electron, you need to know that ions need to have a full outermost valence shell, and therefore we know that atoms with three or fewer electrons in their outer valence shell are going to lose these electrons, and this is because the valence shell is less than half full. Alternatively, we know that atoms with five or more electrons in their outer valence shell are therefore going to gain electrons. And the reason for this is that the shell is over half full, so it's easier to gain those electrons. And this is an important rule that you should keep in mind for your exams. In our example, sodium has one electron in the outer valence shell. And so following the rule above, this means it's going to lose this electron like this, in order to gain a full outer shell. So as you can see in step five, we've decided that our example of the sodium atom is going to lose an electron. So we know it's going to form a positive ion. Finally, the last step involves drawing the new electron arrangement within the shells. As you can see, our sodium atom had an electron arrangement of two, eight, one. And because we're forming an ion with a full outer shell, 
we lose that one electron in the outer valence shell so that the electron arrangement of the sodium ion is 2,8. And as you can see, because we've lost an electron, this means we have only 10 electrons total. And because there are still 11 protons in the sodium ion, this means there is one more proton than electron, and our sodium ion has a positive 1 charge, which can be written like this. Let's go through another example, this time using oxygen. So first of all, looking at the periodic table, we can see that oxygen has an atomic number of 8, which means that it has 8 protons and 8 electrons total. We then need to draw the nucleus of the atom, which we know is going to contain 8 protons, because this is the atomic number of the oxygen atom. And we can simply draw this nucleus like this. The next step is to then figure out the electron arrangement of the electrons sitting in the shells around this nucleus. As we talked about before, we know that the oxygen atom has 8 electrons total. So we know there are going to be 2 electrons sitting in that first shell, and 6 electrons sitting in the second shell, which ultimately adds up to give 8 electrons total. We then need to decide whether this atom is going to gain or lose electrons. And following the rule from before, we can see that the oxygen atom has 6 electrons in its outer valence shell, and this means because it's over half full, that it's going to gain electrons. And in order to gain a full outer shell, this oxygen atom is going to gain two electrons and will look something like this as an ion. When it comes to the final step, we then need to draw the new electron arrangement into the shell, where we can see initially the oxygen atom had an electron arrangement of 2, 6 with 8 electrons in total, and we can see the oxygen ion now has an electron arrangement of 2, 8, which gives 10 electrons total, so there are two more electrons than there are protons, and this gives our oxygen ion a charge of negative two, as you can see here. And that brings us to the end of this video. So in terms of what you need to know, you must know the method for drawing the arrangement of electrons within an atom, and the method for drawing the arrangement of electrons within an ion, because this is a very common end-of-year exam topic. So thanks for listening.